reduce each fraction to lowest terms. The first fraction that we're going to look at here is 4 sixths. In order to get started reducing this fraction, we want to break down the numerator and the denominator using multiplication. I can rewrite the 4 as 2 times 2. I can rewrite the 6 as 2 times 3. Because I see the same number above and below here, I can cancel. I can cancel one of the 2's above with the 2 below. And that leaves me with 2 thirds. I've reduced my fraction to lowest terms. Now there are other ways that people often write this process. Let's look at a couple of them. Often people take the fraction 4 sixths and think about dividing above and below by the same number. Here, we can divide above and below by 2. 4 divided by 2 above is 2. 6 divided by 2 below is 3. There's our reduced fraction of 2 thirds. The 2 that we're dividing by here really is the same as the 2 that we're canceling up above in the first method. There's another way that people often reduce a fraction. Let's take 4 6. Often people divide above and below in their heads. For instance, 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And I get my 2 thirds reduced fraction that way. While this third method is fairly quick with uncomplicated fractions, it can be kind of messy if the numbers involved are very large. In this course, we really prefer the first method for reducing for a couple of reasons. One is that when the numbers involved are very large, it's a lot easier to use this method. Another is that if you go on to learn some algebra, in algebra we prefer this method for reducing fractions. It makes a lot more sense at that level. So while these other ways are okay when the numbers involved are not too complicated, we prefer that you practice and learn the first method for most of the fractions that we reduce. Let's go ahead and do another problem now. Let's reduce 30 36 I start out by breaking down the numbers above and below using multiplication. 30 I can break down as 3 times 10. Now that's not the only way to break down 30. There are many ways I could break that down. I just need to choose one of the ways of breaking down 30. Down below 36, I could break down 36 as 6 times 6. Again, that's just one out of many ways to proceed. Equals. Now, notice here I don't see the same number above and below. That doesn't mean that I'm finished. What I need to do is continue breaking down the numbers that I see above and below, breaking them down using multiplication. The 3 above is a prime number. I cannot break that down further, so I just recopy it. But the 10 above, I can break down as 2 times 5. So I have 3 times 2 times 5 up above. Down below, each of the sixes I can break down as 2 times 3. So I end up with 2 times 3 from one of the sixes times another 2 times 3 from the other 6. Now I do see that I have some of the same numbers above and below, and I can cancel. I can cancel a 2 above with a 2 below. 
I can cancel a three above with one of the threes below. And I don't see any more canceling that I can do. Also, notice here, five is a prime number, two is prime, three is prime. I can't break down these numbers any further. Because I can't break them down further, and because I don't have any more canceling to do, I know that to get my reduced fraction, I just multiply back together the numbers that I have. Actually, up above, I just have a 5 that I recopy. But down below, I multiply the 2 times 3 to get 6. So there's my reduced fraction, 5, 6. Now, I want to look at this one another way also. If you were able to observe from the very beginning that, that in that fraction, 30, 36, we could divide by 6 above and below, it's perfectly okay to do that. In fact, that's a very efficient way of getting this fraction reduced. 30 divided by 6 is 5. 36 divided by 6 is 6. And there's our reduced fraction, 5, 6. But still, make sure you learn the first method, because it's not always so easy to find that one number to divide by that takes our fraction to lowest terms. Let's look at another. Number 3 is 3 fifteenths we wish to reduce. Now up above, 3 is a prime number, so I just recopy it. Down below, I have 15. I can write that as 5 times 3. And now here, I can cancel a 3 factor above and below. But what do I have left from such a situation? It turns out that whenever a number is below the fraction bar, it's got to stay below. It's stuck in the basement. It can't get out of the basement. So that 5 below has to stay below in the fraction. But what do we have up above? We canceled the 3. We don't have anything there left to write. Well, here's where you have to understand a little bit about what the meaning is of canceling. When we cancel by 3 above and below, we're really dividing by 3 above and below. 3 divided by 3 is 1. There's a 1 left behind after we cancel, above and below, even though we usually don't write that down. You don't have to write it as long as you remember that the 1 is left behind. So up above, we have a 1. Down below, we have 5 times 1 is 5 our fraction reduces to 1 fifth, 1 over 5. That 1 above is very important. If you wrote down the 5 all by itself, that's the wrong answer. We need 1 fifth, 1 over 5. Now let's look at one more here, number 4, 72 over 24. Let's go ahead and start breaking these numbers down using multiplication above and below. 72, I know from my times tables, that's 9 times 8. 24, a lot of ways to break that down, but one way is 4 times 6. I don't see the same number above and below, so I keep going. I keep breaking down the numbers that I have above and below. Let's see what we get here. 9 up above, I can break that down as 3 times 3 times. 8 up above, I can break that down as 4 times 2. Down below, I have a 4, that's 2 times 2, times a 6, that's 2 times 3. And now I see that I have several numbers I could cancel. I have a 3 above that I can cancel with a 3 below, a 2 above that I can cancel with any one of the 2's below. doesn't matter which one I cancel with. And now I'm almost tempted to say that I'm done, but you know, I'm not, 
because there's one more number here that I can still break down further. That 4 up above can be broken down further. So I need to keep going. I recopy the 3 that I still have up above times my 4 becomes 2 times 2. Down below, I still have a 2 times 2. And now I see that there is some more canceling that I can do. A 2 above with a 2 below, another 2 above with a 2 below. And what I'm left with here is a situation where 3 is up above, 3 started out above, 3 has to stay up above, and notice that all the numbers have canceled down below. When all the numbers cancel below, there's a 1 left behind to hold the place. So we actually have 3 over 1. 3 over 1 now is equal to a whole number. That's equal to the whole number 3. When we have a number over 1, like 3 over 1, we have to drop the 1 below. That's equal to 3 here. When we have 1 over another number, though, like we did in number 3, 1 over 5, we have to keep the 1. Because that's a fraction that's less than 1 whole, that's equal to 1 fifth. Now there's just one more thing I'd like to do here. I'd like to take another look at problem number 4. We're going to do this same problem a different way. Now let's take another look at number 4. I want to look at how we can reduce 72 24 a different way. There's many ways you can proceed through the steps for a problem like this. 72 over 24. Now to get started, I'm still going to break down the numerators and denominators using multiplication. And I'm also going to start by breaking down the 72 as 9 times 8. But now here's where I want to pause for a second. I have a 9 and an 8 up above. It would be nice if there was a way to break down 24 where I could get a 9 or an 8. And actually there is a way. 24 is 8 times 3. The nice thing about this method is I can go right ahead and cancel an 8 above and below. And so I've broken down a big part of this fraction. I've done a lot of reducing in just one step. Now let's continue. Let's break down this 9 as 3 times 3, that's all we have left above now, over a 3 all by itself below. I can cancel one of the threes above with one of the threes below. And now I'm done canceling. All I have left is a three up above. Down below, the only number that was there has canceled. Remember now, when all the numbers cancel, there's always a one left behind. So we have three over one which is equal to the whole number 3. I drop the 1 below and write my answer as a whole number. Of course, we get the exact same answer that we got before. 